we'll get started. So uh, welcome uh, all attendees to the first of our four part series, our Master Graphics 3D Print Tech Tuesdays. And today we're excited to highlight uh, 3D systems. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Barb Miller-Webb, who's going to host it from Master Graphics, and then Lisa Castillo, if I'm saying that right, Lisa, uh, from 3D Systems. So, Barb, you can take it from here, and I'll just answer the questions at the end and make sure we keep on track. Uh, but uh, appreciate everyone joining us. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Um, so, welcome, everyone. I'm glad that you're on this 3D Print Tech Tuesday with 3D Systems and Master Graphics. Um, just give you a quick background on me. Of course, I've been with Master Graphics a couple of years. Prior to that, um, I was in Additive uh, about 10 years, and uh, that really evolved from my CAD background um, and experience. So from there, we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to take you through the agenda real quick. Um, today, we're going to discuss, of course, how the impact of 3D systems is having on the additive manufacturing industry. So we'll go into a little market overview that I'll cover. Then Lisa Castillo-Brown is going to cover the 3D systems overview. Then we really have um, 3D systems broken out into two segments, if you will, professional series, 3D printing, and production series. And then, of course, we'll leave the end for um, about five minutes of Q&A. So the question is, why are we here today, right? Well, first of all, of course, we've got market and consumer trims that are, that are really pushing us faster development cycles and more customized products. Um, really, if you see additive manufacturing, the transformation that it brings, it's about production and the capability to launch new products or really pivot quickly in, in the marketplace, if you will. So this is a big shift, right? For more and more companies, the focus is getting ready for production and add of it as they are ready now, but now the focus comes to next, which is preparing for that transformation of getting ready to scale up with additive and uh, proceed to a large scale with the possibilities that it brings. And high-level management companies really are looking for that double-digit operating improvement when they're looking into new investments for the AEM. And Certainly, if you think about it, the mindset of designers, they have to understand the new rules, right? When you're thinking about designing. In machining, clearly, it's easier from a standpoint that they have to consider how to, to minimize the number of operations. But with additive manufacturing, it's a little different. They have to pay attention maybe to the orientation of the 3D printing. So we do have to help shift with, towards that additive. I just want to give a high level of Master Graphics. So Master Graphics has various pillars um, of focus here. And first of all, it's the 3D printing solutions, but it's also post-processing. And it's the service side. From a service side, of course, we deal with the additive manufacturing and installing and training, but it's also the consulting side. We go in, we consult, we talk about their applications, their productions, and etc. So with, and I have to apologize, you guys, we have the wrong slides here. I'm so sorry. I got to switch it out. Bear with me here. Lisa and I can fill in as you. You, can you fill in? Slide, the base slide. Look, Barb got to that. I was like, wait a minute. That's not a slide I know how to talk to. Exactly. That's so, a Kevin Carr slide. If you're looking for a that is, that is a Kevin Carr slide. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean Lisa, real quick, I mean introduce yourself. I just kind of you're just kind of pulling it up. For that. It was about that time frame, I believe. Um so yes, I'm Lisa. I am the district sales manager for the South Central. United States for 3D systems. My background is engineering technology, which uh, was mainly focused on product design and manufacturing, cross traditional manufacturing processes. And about in the early 2000s, I started selling uh, software that helped engineers do their job better, faster, get to market faster. 
like engineering CAD design and virtual simulation softwares. And then for about the last 10 years, I've been in the capital equipment side of things, um, focusing on now hardware that helps engineers uh, get their job done faster. So been in the 3D printing space for almost 10 years now, but with 3D systems for about three and a half. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to give you a good overview of our solutions, um, some of the specific solutions, materials and applications that are making a huge waves in the industry today. Um, so yeah, that's me. Good transition, <laughs> got it up just in time. All right. Yeah, there you go. And I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue on with Lisa's side of it. And Lisa, I'll let you start out talking a little bit about 3D systems. So co-founded by the inventor of 3D printing, that is aerial reconnaissance and technology, was Charles or Chuck Cole. 3D systems has grown into a global 3D. Hey, Lisa, can you get a little closer to the microphone, I think? Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. Again, Chuck Hall co-founded um, 3D Systems back in the mid 80s. Um, our solutions, uh, the focus on connecting our customers with the expertise in digital manufacturing workflow required to solve business, design and engineering problems. Our AM solutions tailor to applications that, high, uh, that demand high reliability. In terms of how our business is organized, you can see that we're split into two different organizations. We've got our industrial verticals and then we have our healthcare verticals. And on the healthcare side, we are leveraging this experience to innovate bioprinting technologies to transform patient care by enabling the fabrication of living tissues. Bioprinting is pushing the limits of regenerative medicine that will disrupt healthcare as we know it. In the, in the dental care side of things, we're helping with dental aligners, dentures, crowns, bridges, restorations, and even virtual surgical planning. And then on the industrial side, which I happen to be on, uh, we are helping with flight-worthy parts for aerospace and defense, critical parts for transportation and motorsports, semiconductor equipment, impellers, stator vanes and combustor components for turbo machinery, wax technologies for jewelry and foundries and the list really does go on and on. I, I encourage you to explore our 3D systems website um, so that you can see all the different applications that, that we have come across. But yes, 35 years in the business. Now our broad portfolio, um, as you can see here, uh, let's see actually our footprint. Let's see here. Our global footprint includes sales and support in our over 65 countries either through the direct sales channel or through our valued partners, Master Graphics is one of our valued partners. Um, you can see that through the different locations, we've got customer innovation centers. That's what the acronym CIC that you see there stands for. It's our customer innovation center in South Carolina, Colorado, California, Belgium, and Germany. And in these facilities, we support uh, for design validation, testing certifications, and uh, we also have low volume and bridge manufacturing to help our customers implement their technologies successfully. Across all of these different locations, oops, I'm so sorry. Let's go back to that slide real quick. I just wanted to mention that across all of these locations, we do have about 150 machines. Uh, a lot of them are 24 seven, 365 production. It's really important to mention that we are ISO 9001, ISO 13485 and FDA registered. Uh, we also uh, EN, these are ENAS 9100 facilities. Uh, we do offer certification support for critical regulated applications such as medical implants, automotive, and aerospace. I know that tends to be a concern in the industry, uh, but we do have a lot of familiarity with that. Okay. With advanced hardware, software, and materials, as well as some bridge production services and a global team of experts, we are on a mission to transform businesses through manufacturing innovation. Here's a snapshot of some of our, um, oh, actually on the next slide. This is a snapshot, if you don't mind switching. There you go. <laughs> of some of our hardware um, in the 3D printing technology. Uh, Barbara and I, are, of course, are gonna take a deeper dive with you into some of these technologies. She's gonna talk to the figure four multi-jet and color jet printing that you see there on the lower right-hand corner. And I'm gonna to have to take a select few from our production side. And I will be talking to you, of course, about some of these um, 
specific, uh, mainly the, the, the ones that are most used in the industry. Our 3D printing materials uh, mimic a wide array of engineering plastics, elastomers, and composites. And we match your specific application needs in terms of flexibility, stability, clarity, look and feel, biocompatibility, temperatures, water or chemical resistance, and so much more. Um, I, again, I encourage you to search our website and any of these materials, any specific materials that you find that have been very tested, <laughs> have all the data on our data sheets and they're all downloadable from our website. On the metal side, ranging from aluminum, various grades of titanium and stainless steels to nickel and cobalt chrome, uh, this allows 3D systems to offer an extensive portfolio of sophisticated, ready to run metal alloys for direct metal printing, known as DMP. That's what you'll see it called on our slides is DMP. It stands for direct metal printing. Uh, these, these materials have been tested thoroughly uh, for, the, for the test build parameters. Our newest alloy I wanted to mention there was um, the copper nickel and it has excellent corrosion resistance and salt water and stable material properties that range from 400 degrees Celsius all the way down to cryogenic temperatures of down to negative uh, 270 degrees Celsius. But our metal AM continues to improve um, and offer tremendous value. Oh, and this slide, wonderful. We um, not only are focused on hardware, but we are also focused on um, software. Octon was acquired in November of this year and has become the overarching software for the brands of 3D systems. Um, any of our users are familiar with either Geomagix or 3D Sprint on the plastic side or the slicing um, software or 3D Expert on the metal side, but Octon has brought to the table a manufacturing operating uh, system. And you can see that you can do build preparation and CAM, manufacturing, execution, and, um, and, and using the industrial internet of things as well. Okay, and I'll take it back for a moment. Um, like we talked about, we're gonna talk about the professional side of additive manufacturing, and hopefully we'll have um, a few success stories that we can talk about and, and highlight here. Um, so first and foremost is the 3D Systems Figure 4 DLP technology. I wanna just explain this process a little bit. Um, first of all, DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. It's a technology that basically is, um, it's very similar to SLA in the fact that under this process, it actually has a tray of polymer uh, resin that's exposed with light through a very uh, light membrane. And then with that projector, it certainly creates layer by layer process, right? To 3D print it. From there, it really, goes to a process of post-processing where you pull off the support structures very fine and put them into a curing oven. So that's kind of the process of DLP. I'd love to go into all the different materials. Unfortunately, we don't have time today. So I really just wanna highlight a couple that I think really are important here. Of course, with the figure four, there's about 19 materials. However, that's continuing to be added on every day. So the first I want to talk about is this high temp um, 300 AMB material, which is up at the very top. That particular material is 300 um, degrees Celsius. It is great for HVAC applications. It's also really good for motor enclosures, anything with high heat resistance. Another one I just want to highlight a little bit is the um, rigid 140C black, which is the part down at the very bottom. That one, again, is 140C temp, uh, temp expectancy. And again, really good for housings, for automobile applications. And again, these parts um, are all broken up, as you can see, into concept materials, design, medical, direct production and indirect. So the, the materials are actually defined into different applications that make sense. And then last but not least, I really wanna talk about the latest part that has just come out, which is this clear, um, tough clear material. This is really excellent clarity for transparent um, applications with a little bit of post-processing. 
It's great if you're trying to do something with a flow process and you want to see the flow through it. It's also really good for um, consumer goods, packaging goods, maybe lenses of some sort. So again, that's just a highlight on a couple of the materials. The next technology um, in the professional side is a 3D systems uh, multi-jet printer 2500 and 5600. Um, this process, the multi-jet printing process, really uses a printhead technology and it deposits a uh, photo curable plastic, we we'll call it acrylate plastic, um, and then it uses a paraffin wax for the support structure. So that really makes it nice. It also, there's also another version of this where you can um, uh, use wax material for investment casting. So if you're doing that. The, the biggest difference between these two is that the 5600, as I call it, the kind of the mother of the group, and that one has high-speed multi-material um, printing, which allows you to take a rigid material, it allows you to take a soft material, a rubber-like material, and if you look at the part just below that printer um, with the multi-material, you'll see those various durometers that can be obtained with the rubber-like material in increments of 10. So very good application for overmolding if you're doing something with bicycle handles, knobs of some sort. Um, yes. So the other, the 2500, again, I'd love to talk about all of the different materials because there's about 12 different materials with the MultiJet 2500. So, um, and again, they are categorized into various applications. Some are very considered engineering class. Some are, are considered more for prototyping. Some are elastomeric materials. Um, so the one I wanna highlight is the uh, M2S HT90. This has a high heat deflection of about 90 C. Again, it's really good. And I want you guys to think about this because this could really be a good application for injection mold. And when I say injection mold, of course, it's going to be a minimum number of shots, right? Maybe 25 that you could get out of it. But thermoforming, really a good application for thermoforming, eggshell molding. But also, even if you're in the medical side, it's great as a biocompatible material. Um, so again, another great solution. The next one is the Color Jet technology by 3D Systems, CJP. Um, there's a 660 and an 860. This technology basically uses a powder material. It lays down one layer at a time and then it uses a binder to help solidify it. And then the last couple of layers, we actually use the HP inkjet technology to give you the, the colors. So it actually has about 99% um, of the Adobe color options here. What is it really used for? Well, first of all, the applications are great for concept parts. If you're trying to communicate your models, Certainly from a medical modeling standpoint, it's great if you're trying to communicate between the patient and the, um, and the client itself. And then of course, it's also really good for your um, architectural and education. And then last but not least, of course, is the gold standard 3D systems, right? As Lisa, I think mentioned, if not, then I'll tell you that 3D systems invented um, 3D printing over 30 years ago, in fact, 35, I think now. Um, so it really is the gold standard. It was invented, of course, by Chuck Hall. This uses a ultraviolet uh, laser to um, kind of create layer by layer with your, your uh, photopolymer and then it transforms that into kind of a solid. So it does use a laser beam to trace that pattern as it's, as it's producing the part. And then from there, it actually goes again, pulling off the small support structures and put it into a curing oven. So again, this technology is really great for investment casting patterns, end use parts, um, and certainly prototypes. And of course, there's two different flavors of it, 6,000, 7,000. There's about 20 plus materials, so I'm not gonna cover them all. Just gonna highlight a couple. And this one happens to be um, the 3D systems uh, uh, material that is the clear view. The accurate clear view is really what they refer to it as. And so this is a good example of, uh, from Birdstone. They were trying to prove out a packaging design. And if you notice down there, here's the example of that. 
Um, so they actually use that to create copies and use for cast urethane. Um, what was what was it able to do? Well, of course, create functional aesthetic prototype, right? So that they could go back out and continue testing and continue their consumer research. So, and I am gonna turn it back over to Lisa and let her talk a little bit about the production side of the 3D printers. Hey Lisa, yeah, move towards the microphone again. I'm so sorry, but thank you for letting me know. I want you guys to hear me. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So whereas 3D printing used to be only known for prototyping, um, it has now been developed enough to, to offer production scale uh, for throughput and quality. So I'm going to focus on these four different uh, additive manufacturing technologies, um, starting with the SLA. The advantages of SLA, like Barb explained, uh, provide superior details, high resolution, and smooth surfaces. Historical challenges have been uh, low, low print speeds and material not having long-term mechanical stability um, or long-term mechanical properties. And the company that brought you the first SLA system in the early 80s brings you the first dual laser SLA option for greater throughput, end-to-end -end management and control. Uh, and with production grade materials and a removable vat. From the original inventor of SLA and the inventor of end leader in production grade photopolymer technology, 3D Systems introduces uh, the industry's fastest SLA 3D printers, and that's the SLA 750 uh, single and then the SLA 750 dual laser option. Both of these, uh, just to mention the, uh, both systems, were conceived from the ground up to deliver an industrial uh, leading combination of print size, print volumes, uh, print times, and mechanical properties. They were designed specifically to speed up production times and improve reliability through the use of self-calibrating uh, self hardware and advanced software functionality. 3D Systems has a variety of resins. As Barb mentioned, uh, we couldn't possibly share them all with you today. But over on the left-hand column, you can uh, see there that I've shared a few of the categories, be it tough, durable, uh, the ABS-like, clear casting applications, and high temp and composite class um, for like wind tunnel testing. Um, but the ones I wanted to highlight here are these production grade materials that you see spotlighted. The Acura AMX Rigid Black, um, a pro this has features for long-term stability of mechanical properties together with the exceptional surface um, finish. And if we haven't mentioned it already, our 3D Sprint software gives you the ability to put uh, noise on these parts uh, is what we call it, but it's actually giving you some sort of texture option for picking surfaces on your part and it makes it a really nice combination, really looks like injection molded parts. Um, and then over on the right side there, the uh, durable natural. This is the industry's toughest SLA material. Uh, a unique combination of impact resistance, tear strength, and elongation at break. Um, it's ideal for mandrel tooling of composites to, uh, the, so that the tool does not break when removed. It also has uh, superior isotropic properties. Let's see here. And then these are some of the examples of our SLA applications. I know it's a quite busy, but definitely take the time to look, look through some of this, not only prototyping and production for uh, fit form and functional prototypes, again, the wind, tun uh, wind tunnel testing models, uh, automotive body exterior paneling, under hood powertrain and interior cabin parts. Um, and then of course on the manufacturing aids, molds and dyes, cast urethane and vacuum, casting master, master patterns, and on the biocompatible side, surgical tools, guides, and appliances, as well as biocompatible medical and dental parts. Um, built over the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that the Alpine F1 team uses our SLA 750 to increase their productivity. On the SLS, um, patented in the 1980s by Carl Decker, an undergraduate student at the University of Texas and his academic advisor, Joe Beeman, the idea of SLS was born. SLS is a selective laser centering and it is a powder-based 3D printing technology 
that uses a laser to fuse the material layers into a final part. Um, the technology of, of choice is, is for functional end use parts. You see here that someone's having to take one of these parts out of what we call a part cake. Um, so as long as you can take out as much material as possible that wasn't laser fused, then that can be recycled back into and mixed with your fresh powder. Um, so then your part is ready to be bead blasted. Um, it's really ready for use, but there are some options if you wanna do some secondary post-processing, but these are gonna be your strongest parts. You know, this nylon, you got nylon 12 options, nylon 11 options, flame retardant, glass filled, uh, aluminum filled, soon to be carbon filled. <laughs> and then the, the ones I wanna highlight here at the bottom are our newest materials, they're copolymers, uh, the Duraform PAX Black and the Duraform PAX Natural. Um, yeah, <laughs> there we go. The SLS 380 model is our newest SLS. Um, it's a 380, that's the name, 380 in the X. 330 in the Y and 460 millimeters in the Z, uh, which also translates, of course, to a 15 by 13 by 18 inch build volume seems to be a, a great uh, build volume for most of the applications. Uh, the SLS is a high throughput additive manufacturing solution with unprecedented levels of throughput, consistency, performance, and yield. Um, I wanted to, to point out on here that we've got a closed loop process control that enables high levels of part and job repeatability across multiple parts and builds and machines. Um, it has an algorithm that manages eight separately calibrated heaters and they're taking data points at all times with an IR camera that captures 100,000 thermal data points in that build chamber per second. Um, and why does that matter to you? Obviously for the thermal uh, uniformity across the build process, you can deliver more dimensionally stable and better mechanically performing parts. Uh, so SLS uses production grade nylon materials. Um, let's see here, we kind of covered some of them, but these are some of the applications that you can see for parts with snap fits, living hinges, automotive design, aerospace hardware, medical and healthcare, Homeland Security, military hardware. Um, you know, it's, it's really amazing actually that you can put a part inside a part and actually just blast that away. So as long as you left enough clearance, right, then you, know, you can have moving parts with this SLS technology. And one other thing, I'd be remiss to not mention the fact that you don't have to have supports. Um, you know, without having to worry about supports using SLS, you can nest not only in the X and the Y, but you can nest as high as you'd like to in the Z. And that gives you so much more throughput capabilities. Um, SLS is definitely the, the go-to for end use um, quality and production parts. Over to our uh, DMP, our direct metal technology. Uh, the Flex 3, oh, I'm sorry. First, I wanna mention um, this. No, that's okay, go back to this. Uh, design, test, and uh, produce metal parts with 3D systems or 3D printing that are simply not possible with standard manufacturing. Great lightweight, high strength structures and deliver new capabilities using direct metal printing. Uh, it gives you complete design freedom to manufacture stronger parts that are light, durable, and perform better than any other means that you might uh, actually design it or make it. Our DMP metal uh, printing is categorized as laser powder bed fusion. So again, the uh, material is a powder and the laser melts particles layer by layer, basically micro welding at each layer inside this inert environment. Uh, you can see the different sizes that we have here from 100 by 100 to 90 millimeters, all the way up to a 500 millimeter cube print bed. But the one I'm gonna focus on is that 275 by 275 by 420 millimeters. Um, that is the most used in the industry. The DMP Flex 350 is designed for flexible application use for R&D projects, application development, or serial uh, production. Yet it is easily scalable for volume part production. You can quick swap build modules and, and fast powder recycling speed, um, speed up production. Uh, Central Server manages print jobs, materials, settings, and maintains 
for 27, uh, I'm sorry, 24 seven lights out productivity, uh, metal additive manufacturing software for the expert. This is a really great software for slicing, but it also is, is used by other uh, OEMs, other makers, because we, we, as long as they play well in the sandbox, we like to make sure that you can use the most powerful um, slicing software for preparing your metal builds. But something I'd like to highlight here on the mechanical properties is that we have the industry's lowest uh, oxygen content during builds. It's less than 25 parts per million. <clears throat> really strong parts and high chemical pure purity. But again, data sheets are available for all of the alloys that we have um, and you can download those. Oh, and something I should mention is that we do have a dual laser option now for the Flex 350 system. Gives you two 500 watt laser system, uh, possibilities. Here are some of the applications that you can expect um, with DMP, conformal cooling. Obviously you can do very complex internal geometries um, that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise with traditional manufacturing. Uh, you can do definitely reducing the weight of things is very beneficial using additive manufacturing. Uh, topology optimization, which is being more and more used so that you keep the structural integrity of a part while you know, reducing the amount of material that you have to use. You can see by uh, some of the examples here, some of the brackets that have been lightweighted um, over in the lower left-hand corner, that fuel nozzle is a really good example of some complex geometry that you can use, has a cut view there so that you can see uh, you know, some of the things that you can do internally that you would not be, you would not be able to manufacture that traditionally using um, other methods like machining. There's an example there also that shows you um, a part that went from an assembly to a single part and not only did that improve the performance, but you can see, if, if you can't read it, I'll read it for you. <laughs> it says um, it went from 951 grams to uh, 474 grams, and that is a 50% weight reduction, you know, as well as I do that that's going to save tremendously um, in the industry. But yeah, moving right along, we've got our 3D systems extrusion technology. This is, um, new to 3D Systems. In February of this year, 3D Systems acquired Titan Robotics, a Colorado-based designer and fabricator of large format industrial 3D printers. As the market leader in pellet-based polymer extrusion 3D printing technology and the only manufacturer offering a hybrid tool head configuration, Titan Robotics provides solutions to its customers by developing application-specific processes using Titan's unique additive manufacturing technology. And you can see some of the benefits here. Uh, these systems use uh, pellets. These pellets are the same pellets that you can use in the injection molding uh, manufacturing process. It, it gives you a selection of over a hundred different materials. It is an open format. Uh, the engineers at Titan Robotics will work with you on any types of projects or specific material needs that you have. The, using these pellets can save you because they're like 30% less expensive. They're, they're far less expensive than the cartridges that you get with typical extrusion technologies. And you can print much faster on these large format printers. Let's take a look at the printer. The two build volumes that are available are gone. Again, all of these are customizable by Titan Robotics. Um, but again, the two volumes that are available are 42 by 42 by 48 inch. Uh, and then the 30, 3.6 has a volume of 50 inches by 50 inches by 72 inches. Uh, this is the first time I've seen not only the option to do a single nozzle or a dual nozzle option, but you also have the ability to get a three axis spindle on the same gantry within the same build environment. Uh, so these are again, all customizable. Um, it's, it's been really great in the industry. Um, and then for instance, this layup tool that's in the image right there in the middle, 72 inches, that took 12 hours to build. So that's impressive. I mean, six feet tall, give him a height away, but that's taller than me. And it took 12, 12 hours to print that part. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> And of course, here are some of the materials and applications that um, Titan has been successful with. Um, 
so many different material options from nylons to pack to pet g pla polycarbonates tpe tpu um, some mixtures of ultum uh, water soluble i mean it really goes ac across the board you can see from some of these images how um, some, of the, some of the users um, have been taking advantage of the large formats. So just to kind of summarize everything, you can see here from this slide that we have over a thousand patents um, from over the past decade, um, over 2000 structural uh, tie or uh, um, aluminum alloy components for space and flight since 2015. Uh, again, 35 years of additive manufacturing innovation and experience. We have so much expertise, so many different application engineers. And, and I, I have to definitely mention that we also have a group called the Application Innovation Group or the AIG team that again helps you with some of the uh, certifications, technology transfer. It really helps you take a deep dive into your most challenging uh, most of your challenges in this industry, any of the industry verticals, because we have engineers from all of the verticals. Uh, so definitely reach out to us if we can help you with some challenges. Uh, we define limitations and push boundaries. And in the future, you can expect more customized, customizable materials, user-specific bioprinting and 3D factory options. There'll definitely be more parts in space and in, in, in our bodies and in our households. Thank you for your time. Um, I know that, that that was really fast and it was a lot of information to squeeze in a very short period of time. Um, but again, I invite you to explore our website. You can see it here, www.3dsystems.com. Um, there, there's category sections on the materials, the software, the hardware um, applications, uh, download white papers. Um, but, and of course, this is my information should you have any specific or direct uh, questions for me. Thank you so much, and back back to Mark. Thanks, hey, Lisa. Yeah, thanks. So I uh, again, we thank everyone. As, as you can see, the amazing thing about three D systems, there's no three D print manufacturer in the world that has the wide range of technologies, and I think that's the coolest thing that we wanted to highlight very quickly. So I just had a couple of questions. I know we've gone a little bit long, so those of you who might have to hop off, feel free to do so. We'll send out recording. We had three questions, two are very related. One was metal specific, and uh, I don't think any of us are technical enough to answer that question, so we'll handle that offline. But one of the other questions that came in was uh, when you were talking about SLS, uh, what's the best processing or post-processing method for SLS? They, either one of you want to jump in on that. Lisa, you want to jump in? Uh, sure. Um, there are different options. You know, our... Our SLS parts, especially the regular PA comes out a really nice white. It makes it very easy to paint and hold very, very clear color. Um, at the same time, if you need it a little bit smoother, because some people want the strength that you get with the SLS parts, but the smoothness that, that, that they would like to see from an SLA part. And there is an, an option to do a secondary process called vapor smoothing or vapor honing. Um, like again, we, I, both of us, um, both Barb or myself can tell you a little bit more about AMT and their technologies um, to offer you some options on smoothing out those parts. Perfect. The other one was post-processing. Again, how do you post-process 2,500 uh, parts? And you're right, I really didn't bring that up. So um, with the multi-jet printing, the 2500 or the 5600 for that matter, both of those are post-processed. As I mentioned, of course, it uses acrylate plastic and then it uses paraffin wax for the support structure. So it's really as simple as batch processing. You simply take all those parts off the build plate, put it into a convection oven, or there's also a steam process, and all it does is simply melt off the wax. So that's what allows you to do those intricate parts without breaking anything, which unfortunately there's some technologies out there that require you to use a different process, which allows you to break off some of the fine detailed parts. So that's how you really do the post-processing for multi-jet printing. 
Perfect. Well, with that, we've gone a little bit long. Thank you, Lisa, for fitting so much information in a short time frame, and you as well, Barb. Um, and like I said, you you got Barb's contact information. But uh, with that, we'll let everyone go on their day and uh, appreciate you guys doing such a great job today. Thanks, everybody.